Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. We are going to continue our series on non-linear modeling. Before I start, please like, please subscribe. It really does make a difference to supporting the channel and supporting the new content that I'm putting out, including on, as you can see, IB high-level applications. There's not much out there. So we're going to continue with exponential modeling today. So an exponential model can be given in this form, y equals kb to the power of x. So x is our variable in this case. So generally something like, if I write down y equals 1.05 to the power of x, that would be counted as an exponential model. Okay, and if we use the laws of logarithms like we did in the previous video, we can see the relationship between these two variables. So what we could do with this model is we take the natural log of both sides, so just putting ln on both sides, then using the laws of logs, timesing these two things together is same as adding the two logs together, so we can split it up this way, and then finally we bring our x to the back, which we're allowed to do with logs, giving us this equation here. So the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of k plus x the natural log of b. Now remember, these two things are just constants. So we could consider this as the natural log of y equals, well, if we change that to an m, this looks very, very familiar. And then change this to a c. Essentially, we get the formula for a straight line. But instead of having y equals mx plus c, and that would be a linear model, we get the natural log of y equals mx plus c. This indicates there's some kind of linear relationship between this variable and this variable. So remember in the power modeling video that I did, there was a relationship between the natural log of x and natural log of y. In this case, the exponential model, using this very quick demonstration, there is a relationship between x and the natural log of y. And you can probably predict what logarithmic modeling will be a bit later on. So, Let's go through an example of how to do this. So this is a very standard high level applications question. You're given some data, you need to explore that data, <coughs> excuse me, and then we can then work out if it's an exponential model or not. So our first step, very similar to what we already did, is put this into our GDC. So we're gonna put this data in. So we're gonna open up lists and spreadsheets. We are going to label the two variables that we have, in this case t and m, so we know which one is which, and we're going to type the numbers in. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and for m we've got 3.6, 5.7, 9.1, 14.6, and finally 23.3. Now for this model, we do not want to plot a scatter diagram just m and t. As it says in the question, we want the natural log of m against t. Now there is a quick way of doing this. So I'm gonna put lan m to indicate that this is gonna be all these values here that I'm finding natural logarithm of. What you can do is you can actually type in to this square here, ln, to get our natural log function working. You can also use control in this button here open bracket, and now we're going to use this button here called variable. And what we're going to do is choose this column. This is why I titled it. Close bracket, press enter, and you'll notice it takes the natural log of all the values in this column. It's a good time saver when you're under pressure in the exam. Now what we're going to do with two of these columns is put this on a scatter graph. So we go to this button on. We're going to click this pink button just like we did for power modeling. We get these values here and we're going to select our variables. So we're going to have t on the bottom and we're going to have the natural log of m over there. And the first thing to ensure is, is it a line? And we're going to talk about this in the last video on this series. How can we tell which model to use? And the question that tells us we're going to use an exponential model. And the reason we're using an exponential model is because the natural log of m and t form a line when you plot them on a graph. We work this in the same way we did before. So we go to menu, we go to analyze, we go to regression, and we go to show linear. Very similar to what we did before. And we get this um, regression line for the data we've plotted. And we're going to copy that over 
into our slides. So, get my pen ready. So, I'm going to write this in. Y equals, it's going to be quite big, but that's fine. I'll take a few decimal places, 0 0.4. Six, seven, seven. Well, it's not seven, seven. Let's get the eraser out. Zero point four six seven five. We'll leave it as that. Um, five. Oh, we'll write the whole thing. X plus zero point eight zero nine. One, five, two. And using this, we're going to actually make this equation. So let me go back into PowerPoint. Here we are. This is the basic equation. Um, so that gives us <coughs> part B. So we've done part B, shows why it's related using this regression line. And now we're going to form this equation for part C. So the way we do this is remember that instead of y, we actually took the natural log of m. So we're going to replace y with natural log of m. Now, unlike the power model, this is just going to stay as t. It's not going to be natural log of t, but just t. So 0 0.467559t, and then plus this number here. And so when we turn this into an exponential model, it's a slightly different process that we do compared to power modeling. The first thing we're going to do is raise both sides to the power of e. And you'll see why this is the case. So if we do it on the left-hand side, notice that these two things are going to cancel and we'll be left with n equals. Okay, this is the reason we're doing that, to get m on its own. Similar process to power modeling. But we need to take e to the power of all this. 6, 7, 5, 5, 9, t plus 0 0.8, 0, 9, 1, 5, 2. Okay, and now due to index laws, if you're adding indices, it's the same as timesing the two things together. So we can simplify this to e to the power of 0 0.467559t times e to the power of 0 0.809152. And at this point, we just actually calculate what these two things are on our calculator. So if I go back to our calculator and just go to the normal scratch pad, so just down here, I'm just going to work out what these two things are. So first of all, we want e to the power of 0 0.467559. Five, I'm going to write that down, so 1.5960934. And we do the same with this as well. And then we're going to do a quick bit of rearranging. So 0 0.809152, and that gives us 2.2460026. Okay, so we're going to pop those values in. So we are going to get 1. Point five. I'm going to leave it to three decimal places to the power of t times this, which is 2.246. Okay, and we're done. You can reverse these around, of course. So if I was to write this in the most neatest form possible, this would be 2.246, open brackets, 1.5. 9, 6, 2, the power of t. <coughs> okay, so that's our model. Okay, so this has been rounded to three significant figures. Okay, and what we're going to do now is actually use this to estimate the original mass of bacteria. So we've done this part. Um, the original mass of bacteria, well, that's going to be when t is equal to zero. So just to answer the last question, the original, as soon as you see this original word, 
you know you want t to be zero, so at the start, and if t is zero, this disappears, and then we get the mass to be 2.25 grams to three significant figures. Good, good, and we're done. Sometimes they'll do some sort of interpreting question right at the end. Feel free to go through this example and work your way through it again. Pause, think about the different steps I go through, go through it reasonably quickly, but you can see it's very similar to what we have already seen before. Okay, now it's your turn. So I'm going to let you have a go at questions two and three. So give yourself a good 15, 20 minutes to work through these questions. Okay, it works in the same way. You just type it into your GDC, work out the linear model between natural log of y and x, and then work through the very similar steps that I did in the example. Okay, hopefully you spent the 20 minutes on it. It's really, really worth getting that practice in with these two questions. You'll see the two answers are here. These are your graphs. Question three, they also want you to give the V versus T graph. So you can see it's an exponential. And then you've got a linear graph there as well. And the answers on the board. Right, pretty short video, but I think it's worth making the exponential and logarithmic videos separate. So you can really get practice on one specific model. And then the fourth video will be based on choosing which of those three models that we've looked at is appropriate. All right, bye bye for now.